Fellas, we're coming off a really good fight night. Max Holloway versus the Korean Zombie in Singapore. This was a great fight night. Um, it was absolutely stacked. We had a big main card. Even the prelims were good. There were so many finishes on the prelims. I think this is better than UFC 293, to be honest with you. 293 doesn't look great at all. I think this fight night could actually be better than UFC 293. But we're going to be going over the card today. Uh, we're going to be going over the main card, talking about the fights on the main card. But yeah, the prelims were stacked as well. There were so many finishes on the prelims. But we're going to start off with Parker Porter versus Junior Taffer. A, a fairly short fight ended within less than, like what, 1 minute 24. Um, yeah, a good win for Junior Taffer. This has to be slightly embarrassing for Parker Porter because he's now lost to Junior Taffer and his brother both by knockout. So it's kind of like... You've just lost to the same blood. That's like losing to Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz in like the space of like three fights. So it's not the the best best look on him. But fair play to Junior Taffer. I think Junior Taffer could actually make light heavyweight though because Junior Taffer, he's not he's carrying flab. He's just a bit fat. Like he he's got power and he's got somewhat speed. Would he? He would have a lot more of it. He'd have a lot more speed. And I just think he'd move a lot better at light heavyweight. He's not. He doesn't look built for heavyweight. If you know what I mean. If he just got rid of the fat. I think he could make a cut down to a light heavyweight and do some... I think he'd do better there, to be honest with you. I don't know why he's at heavyweight. A lot of heavyweights tend to have, like, unnecessary fat that they could just cut off and go down to light heavyweight. He just seems really lazy. Parker Porter's massive, so I'm not sure about him. But, yeah, the GOAT has finally lost again. But, yeah, Junior Taffa took out Parker Porter very, fairly quickly. Just happened. Then we had a huge fight in the women's division. Erin Blankfield versus Tyler Santos. Now, this is a big fight. I always call Tyler Santos Talia Santos. I didn't realise it was Tyler. But no, this is a big fight because um, there was a lot of momentum with Erin Blankfield. She'd come off a, a win over Jessica Andrade. And before that, she absolutely dominated Molly McCann and stopped the hype training of, of her. So um, this was a big fight for Erin Blankfield. And obviously, Tyler Santos had just fought Valentina Shevchenko for the belt. Unfortunately, didn't didn't win, but it was still a big fight. Um, uh, the first round was interesting. Uh, because Talia Santos, I keep calling her Talia, Talia Santos was beating her on the feet. She was landing the more shots. She looked like her punches were, were doing a lot more damage. Erin Blackford couldn't really do anything. She Every time she went for a takedown, Talia Santos stuffed it because Talia Santos has really good takedown defense. So the first round was definitely a win to Talia Santos. Erin Blackfield, yeah, got bruised up, couldn't land a takedown. I'd say 10-9 Talia Santos. I feel like Erin Blankfield does have quite predictable takedowns. Like, it's kind of like sometimes she, like, even when you're watching, you can kind of predict right about when she's going to go for a takedown. But anyway, second round starts, and it was kind of the same as the fight start after the round started. Um, Erin Blankfield got Talia Santos against the cage, nearly took her down, failed, and then it gets got to the point where Talia Santos got a little bit too comfortable and decided to try and take Erin Blankfield down and ended up on bottom position. And then she was like that for pretty much the rest of the round. Just got dominated on bottom position. Got, you know, she exhausted. One thing I will say about Erin Blankfield is she's got a really good, she's got really good cardio. Her chin and her cardio is really good. A lot of other women fighters would have been put out there quickly, but fair play to her. Tyler Santos, dominant second round for Erin Blankfield. And the third round started and Erin Blankfield just basically dominated her again. Tyler Santos looked really tired out. Erin Blankfield was landing the better shots on the feet at this point. Um, I think she dropped it towards the end of the round as well. So this was a dominant win for Erin Blankfield. Some people are saying just because it wasn't the you know the the high momentum finish or that she usually gets like just because she didn't look as dominant in this fight, people are saying she shouldn't get a title shot. I think we just give her a title shot. I think we get the winner of Alexa Grasso versus uh, Shevchenko should face Erin Blankfield. I mean, I guess there's the Rosnami Yunus fight that can kind of get one, but. I think we just give it to Erin Blankfield. She's on a winning streak right now. Fair play. Tyler Santos looked good as well, but there's some things she does need to improve. But she has great takedown defense. I'm going to skip over this fight. Nakamura versus Garcia. It wasn't the most interesting fight, but it was definitely dominant to Nakamura. Landed way more uh, takedowns, 4-0. to zero. Most, More significant strikes. More submission attempts. Yeah, pretty, pretty dominant fight, but it wasn't the most interesting. I'm going to be honest with you. It was just a lot of a lot of grappling, bit, a bit of ground and pound. Fair play to um, Garcia for surviving those sub attempts. I didn't expect that to happen. Well, I didn't expect it to survive all of them because there was a lot of sub attempts in that fight. But yeah, I'm just going to skim over this one. Wasn't the most interesting to watch. Then we had the return of Giga Chikedzi. And again, I'm going to skip over this one. This wasn't the most interesting either. I was expecting Giga Chikedzi to... Um, I was expecting him to do do a little bit better, 
I mean, he, he'd fought some killers in there before, obviously, that big fight with uh, Calvin Cater. And this was his return fight after being out for like a year and a bit. Alex, I can't say his name. Alex, though, Alex looked good in the first round. I'd probably give the first round to Alex because he, I think he was landing the better shots. Um, yeah, I'd give the first round to Alex, you know... What's his name? Giga Chiketti did outland him, but I just feel like I feel like Alex was shutting down a lot of what Giga was good at. And then the second round came, Giga Chiketti started to pick it up a little bit. Started to pick it up a little bit in the second round. And um, yeah, I, I, I've got to give it to Giga Chiketti. He's, he's, he's good, but he, he, I, I expected a little bit more from him. I'm going to be honest. I expected more from Giga Chiketti. He's been calling out Holloway. People are even saying he should fight Volkanovski. I... I disagree. I don't think he's good enough for that yet. I think we need another big fight for Giga Chiketti to be out for a year and then do that against Alex, who's like ranked 15 at the time. It wasn't great. Fair play to Giga for winning. He even had a little bit of a promo on the mic after the fight, but it was a close fight, to be honest with you. Like The way he was talking on the mic, you'd ex I thought he had knocked him out cold. It was a very close fight, but Giga Chiketti picked up a win and it wasn't the most... Interesting fact, to be honest with you. Then we, then we had Coleman event, Anthony Smith versus Ryan Spann. Now, coming into this fight, I did have Ryan Spann winning. I thought he, he should have won. He's kind of like the newer breed. Anthony Smith on, on a bit of a losing streak at the, at this point. Um, first round starts, Anthony Smith dominates. Landed the better shots on the feet. Landed way more leg kicks. Won the grappling exchanges. Ryan Spann didn't really have an answer for anything. You know, those times when Anthony Smith was really tagging him in the first round. Second round started, now Ryan Spann is powerful, and he landed something on Anthony Smith that really compromised Anthony, Anthony Smith's eye. His eye looked really damaged in that in that third, in the second round. And um, yeah, for the rest of the round, he kind of got dominated. He, he couldn't really strike properly. Ryan Spann were landing the better shots. Um, the grappling exchanges were, were in favour of Ryan Spann in this round. Um, I actually did expect him to finish him in this round, but it didn't turn out that way. But Ryan Spann couldn't pick up a win in the second round, uh, finish in the second round. And the third round started, and this was where Ryan Spann's fight IQ really got put into question. Because Ryan Spann, his fight IQ is probably some of the worst in the UFC. Even against Nikita Krylov, where he walks into a guillotine. You, you've got a guy who can't take leg kicks, who's got a compromised eye, and you just decide to stand and box with him at a slow pace. He didn't throw any leg kicks, or he might have thrown like one leg kick at all. Um, didn't pay, didn't put the pressure on Anthony Smith like he should have. It was a very, it was a very poor performance from Ryan Spann. Anthony Smith did what he could, I guess. He survived in there and he managed to pick up a win. People are saying it was a robbery. I don't think it was a robbery. I had a Ryan Anthony Smith winning round one and three with Ryan Spann win, winning round two. So I can see why it was a split decision. But I had Anthony Smith winning this. Ryan Spann just didn't do enough. He didn't compromise. He didn't, he didn't take advantage of the injury that Anthony Smith had. So, yeah. Fair play to Anthony Smith. I don't know who he fights next. Ryan Spann needs to get out of the conversation of a title shot. He's just been fin he's just been finished by Nikita Krylov in the first round and now lost to Anthony Smith. He, he needs to get out of the rankings and he needs to... I don't know, man. His IQ is questionable. Anthony Smith, he's probably going to lose his next fight anyway. This is a close fight, but fair play to him. Um, yeah, fight IQ from Ryan Spann was horrible. Then we had Max Holloway versus Korean Zombie. This was one of the best fights of the main card. In that first round, though, Max Holloway was getting tagged by shots that he shouldn't have been getting tagged by. He was getting caught. He he kind of got rocked a few times, and obviously he rocked Korean Zombie as well. Um, it was a nice first round, though. Very interesting first round there. Uh, pretty close, though. I'll give it 10-9 Holloway, though, because he was, you know, he did he, he did make Chan Sung Jung. He did make Korean Zombie stumble a little bit, so you got to give the first round to Max Holloway, but this fight was getting a little bit closer in the first round than people thought it would be. People thought Max Holloway was going to set a significant strike record on his face. Just wasn't the case at all. Second round comes in, and Korean Zombie nearly got finished. There was a point where Holloway hit Korean Zombie with a right hand. I think it was a right hand. And then it, Korean Zombie dropped, and Holloway didn't... He, he felt very hesitant to go for the finish. He didn't go for the finish. He kind of just let, put his hands up and signaled the ref to stop the fight. But Korean Zombie was fine. Then Max Holloway latches up a really bad Darce Chalk. I think it was a Darce Chalk, right? Latches up a Darce Chalk, and I'm not sure how Korean Zombie survived that. He was in for like a good 30 seconds. There was times when I thought Korean Zombie was like out of the fight when he just wasn't, so fair play to him there. And then the third round comes, Korean Zombie comes out swinging. I don't know what his game plan was. I guess he just wanted to get out there quickly. Came out there swinging. 
and it worked for like 10 seconds but you've got to realize max holloway's got one of the best chins in the no he's got the best chin in the ufc holloway catches him knocks him out cold on the feet Koreans will be swinging as he goes down and Max Holloway picks up a knockout win fair play to Holloway um, Holloway has got one of the best chins in the UFC I think he's got the best chin in the UFC I already made a video of this not long ago why he's got the best chin but now that even in this fight against Korean Zombie he proved why he's got the best chin um, it was a really good fight for both of them but you can't really if you're a fan of either of them you know, it's, it's not that bad as a fan of either of them. If you're a fan of Korean Zombie, you've just seen it, one of the best retirements in the UFC because even though we lost, that was one of the best retirements in the UFC. And if you're a fan of Holloway, he's just got another knockout in the third round. So you've got to give it to both of them. People are saying Volkanovski should fight... Uh, no, people are saying Holloway should fight Volkanovski again. I do, I do not agree with that. He's lost to him three times now. I don't think Volkanovski should have to ca cancel his plans or reschedule what fights he wants to do. Well, maybe not reschedule, but if he's got plans, I think we should let Volkanovski go ahead with those plans. I don't think we should force him to fight the guy that he's beaten three times already. And the third time he beat Holloway, it wasn't even close. He destroyed Holloway the third time they fought. So I think we should do Holloway, but some people are saying Aljamain Sterling. I don't, I don't mind that fight at all. Maybe we do Holloway versus Sterling. Maybe we wait for Ilya Taporia to face... Um, Volkanovski and if Ilya Taporia loses then we'll give him to Holloway I'm not sure what's next for Holloway but I don't think he gets an immediate title shot for being Arnold Allen and Korean Zombie because the same thing is going to happen the fourth time I'd much rather watch Volkanovski versus Taporia or Volkanovski versus Oliveira or Islam than watch him versus Holloway a fourth time after he's beating him three times so I think Holloway needs one big win before a title shot but there's many options for him but yeah this is a great fight night. I think this is better than UFC 293 on paper at least. Um, big win for Holloway. Knockout win for Holloway and a great retirement for Korean Zombie. So yeah, if you agree with this and you think this is a good card as well, please let me know. But yeah, thank you for watching.